Excited to be here, Locatora. The Locatora ladies are some of my favorite ladies. And I've been recently getting to know Sanchez. She's also such a lovely spirit, so I'm happy to meet all you guys. This song's called Adams. I've been a stone man, wishing I was the same.
Thank you. Awesome. I got one more for you guys. Um, that first song I played for you is called Bloom Off the Rose. It's available everywhere. Uh, this next song we got coming up, uh, Adams is not out yet, but this next song I got coming up is called Hypnotized. It's going to be out tomorrow or uh, probably at 9 p.m. because it'll be midnight New York. So keep your eye on your Spotify, Apple Music, whatever it is you use. Anyway, it's been a pleasure performing for you guys. I can't wait to talk to you all in a sec. This next song is called Hypnotized. Put your hands up, come on, come on. You now rock into the sounds of the one and only La Señorita Crisol. Come on.
Jimmy on the percussions, yo. beauty we're gonna invite crystal to join us at our little table for a quick little interview let's give it up one more time for los efectos stuck in the middle knows, with this, you the left side is my good side so yes. she always lets me sit right here this is my great side so wasn't crystal and her band weren't they amazing my goodness Thank you, thank you. That voice, those moves, that face, <laughs> my goodness. Thank so, you. So, just to get started, just to get a little warmed up, um, can you tell us about your style inspo for today, uh, Miss Cristal? <laughs> I'm gonna, going for a little, like, rancherita slash, like, man in black Johnny Cash vibe today. Maybe a little bit of, like, Kung Fu Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> You're working it. Yeah, yeah, trying. You're working you know. it. Cristal, okay. you, like, I think of you and I just think disco queen. Can you talk to us about how will you how you describe your musical style? What genre are you creating? Well, when I'm not sweaty, um, I am. Well, I'm working on creating this world. I'm just trying to letting kind of letting out what's in my brain right now. But the world I'm creating is a mix of just all the things I fell in love with when I grew up. Um, listening to, you know, I'm actually there's like five year difference. I'm the youngest, and there's a five year difference between me and my next sibling. So that's like a lot of like older people listening to just different genres, different decades. And it all got dumped on me. And especially when they, gosh, when they found, it for, found out I could sing, they're like, oh, you should listen to this singer. You should know who this is. So that was really cool. But I'm like, how do I just lump myself into pop when I love, you know, trios and boleros? How do I lump myself into just doing cumbias when I love, you know, I don't know. Just, it, it's just because I'm, I'm trying to do this, like, genre for kids like me that grew up. And I'm also a first-generation Latina, so who grew up with kind of one foot in both, you know, both places. And that's, yeah. Sorry, I just played a set, so it might. Yeah. <laughs> my adrenaline's a little up, Let's but I'm hoping, it up for yeah. Crisol once yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. So, Crisol, can you tell us a little bit about did the music find you or did you find the music? I know you just shared about the musical inspos right. in your house and in your life, but. Did, did you just feel like a longing, a calling, you needed to make music? Did, is it something that you stumbled upon? Like, how did you get to this place? Um, it was pretty automatic when I was a kid. Um, I have known what I wanted. I have to tell people I know what I wanted to do since I was five. It sounds strange, because at five, you're like, I'm going to be an astronaut and a teacher. Like, I was always like, oh, I'll be a teacher and a famous singer. That's like, that was the two things for me. But um, fun fact, actually, Selena was the first... Uh, <laughs> she was the first uh, first person I ever looked at and was like, oh, like, you could do this as a job? This is cool. Like, I just, um, I, I would have been, but I, from what I'm told by, you know, my mom likes to talk like stories and stuff, but I've, apparently I've been singing since before I could even remember, and then no one ever told me to shut up. So here I am. Yeah, it just, so, uh, yeah, it, it was definitely a kind of, I just knew what the, like, my, my purpose was, um, and I felt, I feel really lucky because I know a lot, you know, I just found me young, and it, I got bit by the bug early. Beautiful. <laughs> you know, and you're also a part of a, another group, another band that you had. You're the, the lead, right? Which is Selenamos. Selenamos, shout Selenamos out. Selenamos fans. Those are all my Selenamos, Selenamos yes, guys, yes. too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Los Efectos is also, also Selenamos. <laughs> we're, we're wearing two hats over here. <laughs> yeah, we, we can definitely relate to that. So, you know, you already touched upon Selena being an inspo. So what is it like? you know, doing the Selena, because even when you do the Selenamos and you do the Selena tribute, you still have your own spin. Yeah, that's the point. Um, you know, there's tons of, you know, you, there's tons of tributes out there, and each one of them's great in their own way, because they're all, they're, all of us are doing the same thing. We're all having a fan experience with fans. Um, our tribute focuses, I, I focus on having, 
for example, these guys, like really badass musicians on board with me and we focus on like the music first and the sound first. Um, and then after that, it's like all the fun stuff. So I think because we focus on that, that's what we're able to kind of make it our own, but also like we're playing the songs directly and to the best of our abilities. So that, that so it's a little, I don't know. And then when we first started making Selenamos, we're like, okay, cool. Like she's got a limited repertoire, unfortunately. So what, what could we throw in there that would connect with her fans that we think Selena would enjoy? Like, we, Selena would have been a Beyonce fan, let's be real. Yeah, truly. So we truly. throw in a little of that. It's like, like a little bit of lemonade, right? There's a little lemonade in the set. Come through. <laughs> yeah. I put that in there because I was like, we're going to Texas, y'all. Let's do it. <laughs> and the last song that you played tonight is a new song, right? This yeah. is your new song. You want to tell us a little bit about the new music you're coming out with? Yeah, yeah. So right now, um, so I've been... So the Selena thing, I've been doing that actually longer than I've been doing uh, writing as an individual. I, I did a lot of session work before while I was in Selena Amos and gigging for others, um, doing background vocals, tech work, whatever it is. So um, right now I'm just releasing a series of singles and kind of gearing up to start working on bodies of work. So this will be the kind of the last of the just random little singles to establish who I am and my identity and show people my writing. And actually, funny enough, this song is the first song that I wrote like by myself. The first two were collaborations. This one is of me. My producer, of course, like cleaned it up a little bit because <laughs> I came, came to him with a very rough demo, but he, um, and, but he totally threw his magic on it and it sounds, so, it sounds amazing. And these guys obviously bring it to life uh, way better than I could ever imagine on, like, in, in person. But that's, so yeah, that's the thing. It's the latest single. And then next, you can expect hopefully like more compilations and and groups of songs versus just taste. That's amazing. And you know the, the theme of today is "Sin Musica No Hay Paraíso," right? And one of the inspos when thinking about the title of this show was thinking about how music in times of political turmoil can be a form of escapism, a form of refuge. We've seen that artists create their best work, unfortunately, during these really trying and difficult. How do you feel, you know, I'm going to take it there, the current political climate has influenced your work in any way, if it has at all? I have sing to powerful women. That's, that's who I sing to and for. Um, yes, I want, I want, and also I don't, um, because I'm a little rougher on the edges, I would call myself. Um, I sing to four women, but I invite men to also be like, yo, like my whole, all, I love the dudes in my band, you know what I mean? Like, I think part of us growing right now in this in this climate is in, inviting everybody in the conversation. So I want men and women to vibe on the music, but I want to empower people like me. Um, so and then also I'm I'm you know being first generation actually. This whole a lot of what's going on right now has been affecting me. Um, so it's been cool to just kind of use the music I'm I'm making to build a network to just bring up some you know to work on other projects that you know, could benefit organizations or, or things like that, that that would help these causes that I feel really passionate about. So I hope that answers it. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, and I love the fact that you're a lead singer. You're a diva. <laughs> and there are so many powerful divas. No, truly, like, in the best way. Like, divas are so powerful, right? Throughout history, we can think of the Tina Turners and Mariah the Beyonce, Carey. the Mariah Careys, the Shaka Khans. Right, Shaka Selena, Shaka. divas are so powerful and such voices and such figures. And I'm wondering, you know, like you embodying the diva role and entering that world, who are your diva icons and idols? Latina Turner. Yes. <laughs> Legit, that's like, I think that might be one of my screen names somewhere in the yeah. ether is, is Latina Turner. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know that, that, that she's that Tina Turner, uh, the Beyonce of her time, let's be real. Um, she was, a, uh, and especially because of the fact that she got started, really hurt, she kicked off later in her career of, of, to be the legend she is today. But Tina Turner, Selena, Rocio Durcal, um, I know, mm -hmm, I hear like, I hear some snaps and some, mm -hmm. You can snap, you can cheer. Yeah. Um, Shakira is one of them. I was like blonde for three years because I love her so much. <laughs> I was gonna ask like Shakira during her Roquera days. No, right. well, I, I like, I like Laundry Service was the first album I paid for with my own okay. money. Okay. I own Laundry Service. I can relate. Okay. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great <laughs> album. It's great. Uh, uh, and who else? Um, it, it's it's a long list, man. I'm I'm you know it's one of those things when people ask. You can think of this all the time, but when people ask you, you get very like. Um, oh sure sure. Yeah, but it's you know I um I think Beyonce, Lady Gaga is another big. Uh, I really like uh, people who tie in really uh, like they're better willing to push brownies with their work, but then are also very kind. So, I don't know. There's like that balance of being a diva and, and pushing for what you want and fighting it back against people telling you no, because 
sometimes these crazy visions, you're like, imagine if they listen to someone telling them no. But then they also put a lot of work into their philanthropy and how they make their, and how the people that they work with feel. I love, I mean, being in the industry, you run into people like, oh, I worked with so-and-so and I worked with this person and that's really cool. But I'm always like, how do they treat me? <laughs> right. And it's so cool to hear like, oh, dude, like either A, like it was really, like they were really professional and it was cool or like, they're so nice to me. Like that's the stuff that makes me all warm and fuzzy and really admire these, these artists that I named. Amazing. So, you know, you talked about releasing your last EP and working on a larger body of work. Um, what is, other than that, what is next for you? What can we expect from you? Any surprises you can share with us? I know, like, you have a little something in the works, but I'm not sure if you're allowed to talk about it yet. You know about you know. it. I was, like, one of those leading, yeah. <laughs> leading the witness. <laughs> no, I can talk about it because um, it's, it, it's, it's my project. Um, I am working on a, actually, I'll, speaking of uh, idols, Another three women that I really look up to, Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstadt, Amy Lou Harris. Um, yeah, hey. So they had a group in the 70s called, uh, I wanted to say with an accent, Trio, but I'm sure they called it Trio. <laughs> um, but they had a group uh, back in the 70s, I believe it was mid-70s, right? Um, and uh, I had to look at my man's explanation on that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, they did, uh, some of them were like, they, so they did, harm, they harmonized over about a couple, like, some songs and they did like a covers album one song they did that did not make the album but i discovered it years later through where i worked at the label we really we re-released it and we did a remastered version of it called calling my children home and uh it's a gorgeous song um you know it's a mother it's kind of like a danny boy type song where it's mothers singing to their children who are gone may not return home and that they feel love and responsible for them um you know, and I've worked at, well, you, actually, you guys were there, the Al Otro Lado, the De Todos yes, Lados events. Yes, yeah. So Al Otro Lado is this organization, they're a nonprofit that does pro bono legal work for immigrants and families seeking asylum at the border. And they're a very small team of, I don't know, like four to seven people, super small, and they've already reunited 29 families. Um, Amazing. So, yeah, no, yeah, hats off to them. Yeah. They're, 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 working their, they're working their butts off. Um, I did a benefit concert with them on behalf of Selenamos. I really wanted to do something on behalf of me as, as, as an artist as well. And so uh, myself uh, just to, and a couple other really talented singers, I got Veronica Rosa, who, Veronica Rosa, I keep wanting to say everybody's accent. <laughs> Veronica Rosa from Introverted Funk, La Mera Candelaria. Um, we're, so we performed the song and we actually got approvals and I've already performed it. We did it in City Hall in the rotunda there. And so we recorded it and so that's going to be coming out. Um, so I'm telling you all and you guys, because when it does come out, we want to share it because every all the money and the, the awareness that comes from the video is going to go directly to benefit Al Otro Lado and hopefully get people to donate and be aware of their cause. And there's so many organizations and people that are out there fighting and protesting. But, uh, you know, these girls are a really small team and, I, you know, I know them. So I'm just trying to help out. And it's really cool to be able to use my platform and music to um, to create something like this and put it out there. And hopefully people will enjoy it and feel compelled to to think about what's happening and donate. I Beautiful. love it. Thank you. We Beautiful. love a conscious artist. Yes, yes. <laughs> so yeah. I think we have time for one final question. One last question. Yes. So, Crisol, in your own words, how would you describe Paraiso? What is Paraiso in your own words and imagination? Paradise? I had to translate a couple. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, what is paradise? Um, the smell of, of a panaderia early in the morning. And you just go buy one and that fresh baked bread and then being able to go in there and indulge and not worry about any calories. I'm just kidding. Ah, no, paradise to me, man, it, it's, it's truly a place where, um, yeah, we're just like people can just kind of like be free, speak, disagree and talk without there being any animosity. That's kind of like ideal, like overarching paradise, like peace on earth, goodwill to men. But yeah, for real, the panaderia thing, I'm sick of that. <laughs> I like that answer. I agree. <laughs> All right, let's thank Crisol one more time. Thank you, Crisol. Um, also, real quick, where can people follow you if they want to keep up with your Ooh, work? Social media. Yeah. Um, I'm on Instagram, Crisol. It's C-H-R-I-S-O-L with an underscore after it. Just like, kind of like, yeah. Chris O-L. Um, you can also, I'm, I have to spell it out. A lot of people think it's Cristol or Cri Cristal. There's no T, I promise. You won't find one if you look. Um, I'm also on Facebook, Twitter. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm really trying to build that up right now. I'm trying to be a Twitter bruja, but it's not 
no one's liking my tweets. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, she, but yeah. she's a very funny tweeter. We follow her. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm all right. It just one's got to hit. Once one hits, <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah, Instagram, uh, Crisol, and then uh, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you take your musical drugs, please uh, follow, follow me and, and and subscribe to wherever you know all that music gets put up. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Crisol. One more round of applause for Crisol. <laughs> Thank you. Babe. All right, what a beautiful human, no? Yes. My goodness. Inside and out, we are so lucky to be friends with her, yes. honestly. Yes, we're also excited that our parents decided to join us. Yeah, Thank thanks you. for getting her late, parents. <laughs> to both of our parents. We're gonna Thank shame you for being our here. Parents. <laughs> Mama Munoz is on the phone right now. <laughs> Thank you for being here, we love you too. Um, so we have more beautiful programming and music and conversation coming up for us. We're really excited, so excited to introduce this next artist. So we are super excited to introduce Sancha. Please give a warm round of applause. Make some noise for Sancha. Woo!
tu calor a los demonios y ahora vienes por el mío a mí me até en mí a mí me até Thank you, Lou. Lou on the saxophone and flute. Tenemos una más. Dicen que por las noches no más se le iba en puro llorar. Dicen que no dormía, no más se le iba en puro tomar. Juran que el mismo cielo se estremecía al oír su llanto. Como sufrió por ella, que hasta en su muerte la fue amando. se le iba en puro tomar juran que el mismo cielo se estremecía al oír su llanto como sufrió por ella que hasta en su muerte la fue llamando Hey! <laughs> 
Las piedras Thank you to Lou, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Let's give them both another round of applause. One more time for Lou over here on the sax. Killing it, killing it, killing it. We're going to invite Sancha to come sit with us for an interview. And let's thank Lou one more time for being amazing. <laughs> Yeah, the middle's good. The middle's good. Perfect. I'm going to squeeze by you. Whew. Emotions, no? Wow. Thank you, Sancha. Thank you, Sancha, so much for being here tonight. Uh, when we sent our little email, like, to your team to see if you would be interested, we were like, I don't know. Like, Sancha's kind of a big deal. I don't know if Sancha's going to respond. Yes. And we freaked out. Yes! Thank you so much. Um, so I know you have some new music coming up. You have an EP coming out. Um, no, I have a full album. A full album, yes. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit um, about your musical journey up until this point and to the creation of your new album? Um, that's a long journey. Um, <laughs> so... Let's start in San Francisco. So I moved out of my parents' house when I was 17 to go to college. And I went to a Catholic college so that they would be happy about it. And then I dropped out and I moved to San Francisco. <laughs> Love it. Wow. Um, and then I broke up with an ex and he was a man. So then I started to hang out with drag queens right after. And then I was never with men again. <laughs> <laughs> That's and a great story. That's actually where I got kind of my rebirth. Because um, I would make tracks by myself, but I didn't perform them anywhere except for like open mic and stuff with the guitar. And when I met this one drag queen who's now my drag mother, um, she had me play at her art show and she had never even heard me. She was like, oh, girl, you sing? Come sing at my art show. <laughs> and I had three tracks that I had made on a laptop or whatever. And that's what I sang there. And then ever since then, I haven't stopped performing every weekend. Um, it's been a lot of dive bars, a lot of really blacked out nights. <laughs> <laughs> and then I left the Bay, moved to Mexico, and then stayed with my tia on the farm and that's when my my tia was like i don't know what you're doing with those people out there like <laughs> basically like she just thought i was around a bunch of punks which was kind of true um <laughs> and she was like i don't know what kind of music you're making but you should be making ranchera music and i was like whatever tia <laughs> you don't know anything <laughs> and then i had all my recording equipment because i had gone with the um intention of finishing up this telenovela, which is now getting released. Um, but I went with that intention, and I actually, like, instead I recorded a bunch of rancheras for them, but then they traded around with the family and stuff. I have 12. My mom is one of 12, and my dad's 14. So oh. they were really trading that around. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, um, and then I got convinced to move to L.A., 
Um, and then the person who's my manager now was not my manager then, but when I got to LA, he was like, girl, come with me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I joined another band and now I have a full telenovela. <laughs> Amazing. So, you know, I'm, I'm curious, since we are talking about your trajectory and your origins, I would love to hear this name that you created, Sancha. Mm -hmm. You know, for folks that are Spanish speakers in the room, what is a Sancha? <laughs> the mistress, la otra. la otra, right? And we love La Otra here at Locatora Radio, okay? We have a whole capitulo on it. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, can you talk about your name and the origins of it? Yeah, um, so my mom was telling my best friend at the time, she's Filipino, um, she was like, because I guess her boyfriend kept being like, oh, she's with the Sancho, and she didn't know what that meant. And my mom was schooling her. She was like, oh, you don't know what a Sancho is. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote it down, and I separated the words right away. And then um, I was like, I wouldn't call myself that. And then later on, I like, like flipped through my pages and was like, oh, no, that's perfect. And was like thinking about it in this way of like, um, like, like a religion that has one God, but actually um, if you grow up Catholic in a rural part, you're most likely Catholic. And that's the way my parents grew up in and the way I was raised. So the um, Catholic religion is actually like really polytheistic, um, especially because it's mostly the Virgin Mary that they're paying attention to and a lot of saint worship and a lot of like idols. So I was thinking of Sancha in that way and also how like the saints play that kind of side role um, to what's supposed to be like the main God, but even like that's questionable. Um, so I was thinking of it in those like kind of religious terms and also thinking about um, how we most of the times like worship our, our idols and musicians and was hoping that I would be more of a person that like you can like one thing and then not like the next and it's okay you know yeah absolutely we love flipping catholicism on its head here absolutely. also at locatora <laughs> radio okay we are recovering catholics sorry parents yes, that are yes. here sorry parents uh, our, parents, <laughs> our moms are looking at each other sent us to catholic school absolutely <laughs> yeah i love the idea of saints as side chicks to yes. God, like yes, I think that's great. Saints as side right. chicks. So I'm the saints it. are la otra. <laughs> I'm with it. <laughs> so, um, Sancha, the first time I ever saw you perform was at Vivianas. Um, oh yeah. You did a beautiful production there for one of the Red Bull Music Academy shows, mm -hmm. and it was like set design and and images and costuming, and you used the entire space. And Vivianas is huge. Like, yes. it was immersive it was incredible can you talk to us a little bit about the the theater of your performance and how theatrical it is and your process um well when they approached me you know i had had that telenovela idea since like mexico and that was like 2014 even before that because i left to finish it and um i never imagined it as a theater piece i imagined it as like music videos and stuff like that. So when Red Bull approached me, I was like, oh, I got just the thing. I got this new thing. And then that's not even finished yet. Like I had to finish 13 songs, um, teach the band the 13 songs. Um, and then also I got together with a friend in the Bay. Um, that's one of the inspirations for the telenovela. And he helped me like get everything organized because I'm not an organized person at all. Um, and he was like, the first thing you need is an Excel document or not, not Excel, wait, Microsoft Word or something. I don't know. <laughs> See, I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> um, and he was like, so we're going scene by scene and I was plugging in the song and the link and it was like half songs or not even like, not even half songs, like quarter songs and things. And um, even just placeholders. But he made me map out every scene, and then he helped me doing the storyboarding and stuff like that. So I had a creative director, um, and it's just someone that I used to um, collaborate with in my, like, drag punk days. Um, but he makes videos and video art and stuff like that, and he helped me a lot. And then um, and I was like, well, I need a choreographer. And I, <laughs> and of course, I have my friend who makes me all my 
my custom outfits and stuff. Olima Studio? Yes. We're obsessed, huge fans. <laughs> yes. Are you wearing Olima tonight? Yes. Goals. <laughs> Give Goals. it up. <laughs> um, so, and then I, of course, had my manager at that time, thankfully, and um, we also got together with Lady Soulfly, who did the hair. Um, so it was like a whole creative team. Um, it was really stressful, and I had to write a lot of music in very little time, but um, yeah, it all, it all came together like the day of the show, because the dress rehearsal was a complete di disaster, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Oh my God, what did I lead everyone to? This is dumb. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, we're going to fail on stage and it's all my fault. <laughs> no, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was seamless. It was gorgeous. It was amazing. So um, I want to talk more about your aesthetic and your look because every time I've ever seen you on the gram um, performing, there's an entire look happening. Can you tell us a little bit about putting your, your aesthetic together and the importance of that for you? Um, well, it's always been really important to me, um, but it's always a lot of anxiety doing it by myself. So now that I have my friend Olima helping me, um, it's a lot more put together. And, um, you know, we're inspired by, like, people like Rocio Durcal and Juan Gabriel who have, you know, their persona is huge on stage. I... When I didn't have anyone doing custom for me, I would go and buy wedding dresses and rip them up so that they fit me because they would never fit me. <laughs> um, just so that I would take up space on the stage, you know? Um, I love the sparkle. I love, I love being huge, you know, once I'm up there. Um, or it's different, you know, off stage. <laughs> Gorgeous. Love it. I love that because, you know, what you're talking about is adornment. And I feel like a lot of women and femmes can practice that adornment and we take it very seriously. So I love to hear you talk about that. And... I feel like I'm in drag on stage. So that's, <laughs> I mean, maybe drag is every day, but, um, <laughs> but yes, I, I, because I learned from drag queens, like, my drag mother's always like, oh, those heels aren't high enough. <laughs> Fair. Yes. So we, we asked Crisol um, this question, and we would love to ask you and get your perspective as well. And that's, you know, in times of crisis and turmoil, the role of music, the importance of music, and what things like the current political landscape, what does it do to your creative process, or how is it reflected? You know, at times it feels like, like you're guilty or something for like to keep making things, but always like my friends around me who are also artists and stuff like that are always like the most important thing is to keep going and to like, like your art is important at this time and your voice, um, especially coming from like immigrant backgrounds and a lot of my family is still undocumented. Um, and, you know, we're still going through this and we don't know how to solve it, but we know how to, like get our work out there at this point. So like the only thing is to keep going, keep telling the stories of our our families. It's been a lot more important to me to um to bridge the gap between like me and my parents um and that generation, you know? Mm -hmm. I want them to come to the see the telenovela and not be scared that I'm gonna take my top off or something. <laughs> Same. We, same. <laughs> we were joking that we were like, uh, parents, come tonight. It's at the library. It's a wholesome show. Yeah, that honestly. <laughs> come through tonight. Yeah. If you've been to any of our other Locatora live shows, we talk a lot about sex. And both of our parents have been there each time. Yeah. And we were like, okay, y'all, like this is a very appropriate, wholesome <laughs> venue. So please come. Yeah, please, come. <laughs> please come to the library show. Um, you know, taking it back, you were talking about uh, your friends that are now part of your team. Yes. And we heavily relate to that. Mm -hmm. You know, all of our friends are a part of the Locatora team in one way or another, whether that be Mala Sister is our stage manager. Yeah. We have our friend that's our creative producer for one project. My childhood best friend is our makeup artist. He did Shout our makeup Robert. today. Yeah. So what Monica, yeah. who helped us set up tonight. Yes. Childhood friend also. Shout out to all of our friends that keep us going because we need to be managed, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so what has that been like for you, bringing your community with you and also including them in this creative process? Um, I guess it's tricky sometimes because we get mad at each other. 
<laughs> but we can tell each other, you know, what's wrong and then have little check-ins or not have check-ins. And then, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's a relationship and it's very personal and it makes it so that this world isn't, because to me, like the music industry is very like, I don't, I don't know what it is. I've never been a part of it. I've been a part of, you know, singing at dive bars. So it's been a good learning experience with my friends. And also some of them have more industry experience and um, they're very caring in how they like relay that information to me or they tell it to me very blunt and they can do that, you know? Yeah. It's good. It's important to have good people on your team who will tell you the truth. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, we we want to close out this interview by asking you in your own words and in your own imagination how you would define for yourself Paraiso, paradise. Well, I've always um, wanted my own home where like I could just create with my friends and they would come in and out and we'd be making music all day. And that was it. Feeding each other, having good vibes, making music, jamming not having it be for like anyone like it could just be something that we create at the moment and it's just there and that's that's paradise to me paraiso beautiful <laughs> i love that thank you so much sunshine thank you so so um we just want to thank once again sancha yes <laughs> and Crisoli Los Efectos. And we want to thank the LA Public Library for allowing us to have this beautiful forum and night of music and conversation. I think especially in trying times, it's nice to come together and just enjoy each other and, and enjoy all the creativity in our great city. Absolutely. Once again, we are Locatora Radio. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at Locatora underscore radio. You can tune in to our Radiophonic Novela, our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audio Boom, and SoundCloud. We have more events coming this, this fall, so please keep up with us on Instagram. That's where we post all of our flyers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Besitos. I'm besitos. <laughs>